hello, I'm moving again. No. <laughs> so I'm moving, I'm moving, <laughs> I'm moving. I'm moving during a pandemic. I am being evicted from my home because my landlord decided to sell this house and he's has every legal right to make us go. So we have to go. And um, I'm not quite yet ready to reveal <laughs> where I'm moving to just because I don't want to jump the gun. I want to make sure things that are, are settled in and everything. But it's going to be a big move. It's not going to be like, oh, I'm just moving across town. This is a pretty big move. A very big move. And so... Everyone always says like, how do you drink out of a square mug? Just you, a corner. You just, you just drink out of a corner. I've moved a lot and I've always owned a lot of books. So I'm very used to moving books. However, because this is such a big move, because I'm so exhausted, <laughs> I am going to be trying to purge as many books as possible. <sighs> this is not easy. Some people are going to say that I barely purged any books. Some people are going to say that I purged too many. Some people are going to get mad at me for the books I choose to purge. So I just want to say right up front, books are so subjectively personal. They, we all have favorites that other people hate and vice versa. Me getting rid of a book doesn't mean that I hate it. It doesn't mean that you're bad for liking it. So please don't take it that way. What I'm trying to do here is curate my collection. I'm trying to get my book collection, these books that I love so much to a point that I am very happy with all of them. So here's what I'm gonna try and do. I am going to try my very best to cut my collection down to the books that A, I really care about. These are books that are special to me for whatever reason. B, keep the books that I want to read soon or envisage myself wanting to reread eventually. Three, I am going to try and purge the rest. Um, a lot of people are gonna ask, like, what am I gonna do with all the books that I don't keep? First of all, I'm gonna send photos of them to my friends and say, like, do you guys want any of these books? I will go drop them off at your house. Secondly, I am going to go to my local independent bookshop and I'm going to sell them as many as they'll take. And then I've already talked to my local bookshop and they're going to donate the rest. They, you know, they're the bookshop in town. They know everything about like best places to donate and stuff. That's what we're gonna do here today. I'm nervous. <laughs> There's a reason this intro is so long. I'm avoiding the task at hand. All right, so I have this bookshelf. This is the main stuff. I also have my Frida books and then I have this gallery wall which yes is a disastrous mess. That's this is what moving is. Things get worse before they get better. So let's begin. <laughs> I'm like literally I've been meaning to film this video for like a week and I just keep avoiding it because I don't want to do I, I want to do this but it's just such a big task. Okay okay okay. Okay, you have to just, you have to start at the beginning. Um, I know actually that this little stack of books is all books I want to keep. So I'm just going to keep using, oh, you can't even see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know that these are all books I want to keep. So I'm just going to make my way over starting, starting at the top. Ah. So this is a book by one of my favorite authors. This book is my favorite by him. This I got to do a video campaign for and he sent me a signed book. So even though I love this one more, I'm going to definitely keep this one because it's signed and personalized. And I don't, they should totally be together. They are beautiful. I feel like this section is the most painful because they're hard covers and I know how expensive they were. Okay, this, because I was doing a video campaign for this book, they sent me an early copy of it. So I definitely don't need to keep two of these. I'll keep clearly the one that was signed. This is really beautiful. Wow, it turns out I hate blue and yellow books. <laughs> okay, that was not so bad actually, and I feel like I really eliminated a lot. I actually do think I want to keep this one. Which I got second hand somewhere and it just, I don't know, it's about like 
a baker who lives in Paris. I just watched Emily in Paris, which is cringy. The plots and tropes are overdone, but I loved it. Um, so I, I'll, maybe that's the only reason I'm keeping it, but I'm keeping it. Oh. Okay. Even though I just was sent this beautiful edition of Emma, and it is, it's beautiful, but I have an edition of Emma. Here, okay, here's my question. With a series like my Jane Austen books, I have them in this series. They all look like this. I don't love them. I think they're good. The paper quality is nice and the font is good. So, so they're nice enough to read. But the reason that I've kept them all these years is because my mom bought them for me. So I kind of have a little bit of an emotional attachment to them. But should I like swap out one of them for this better edition of Emma? What does better even mean? <sighs> it's fine. I don't, I don't need it. I, don't need it. I will keep this bookmark though that says Emma. I love reading a book when I have a bookmark that goes perfectly with it. This was from the movie, which I adored. It was so good. I've watched it so many times. I'm gonna get rid of these three Penguin English classics to the lighthouse, um, Mary Barton, and ghost stories because I just don't think I'm gonna read them. When I have something like this, my impulse is like, keep it all, it's part of a collection. But that's not, that's not helpful thinking. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. Listen, my YA days are mainly over. They're not fully over. I will always read YA because I think it's a really great genre. I'm just mainly excited about other things now. But for example, in this kind of a situation, I read the first book, I really liked it. I got the second book, I started it, I got bored, I didn't finish it. Do I ever think I'm gonna finish the series? No. So why keep this? Do I love this book enough that I wanna keep this one? <gasps> it has a signed note from a friend. Okay, we'll keep this one, we'll get rid of the sequel. Graphic novels are hard for me to get rid of because even when I didn't like the story so as much, they feel like beautiful art objects, but they're the heaviest of the books. So I'm gonna try and <laughs> I feel like it's more important to have a book collection of books you loved, the ones that you've read that are on your shelves you're like excited to recommend. Because like what often happens to me is I'll like flip through and I'll be like, yeah, that one was okay, it's like, then why do I have it? So I should just keep the ones I really liked or I would want to lend to people. I think that's what I should do. These were all graphic novels that I thought were just okay. I didn't love, um, and I'm okay to part with. So this pile is like, this is the kind of thing that I think some viewers will get mad at me about. <laughs> like a lot of people are gonna say that I waste my money. Um, I'm being vulnerable with you guys, so maybe you guys can be nice to me. These are all books I haven't read. They're all hardcovers. To be fair, three of these were sent to, to me by publishers, so I didn't actually pay for all of these, but I did pay for two of them. But I just don't want to read them anymore. Or I do want to read them eventually, but they're not so high on my radar. I've had them for years and I haven't read them. There's a few in here that I haven't read. Um, but this pile I've read a lot of, and they're just books that I didn't love or like normal people. I have another copy of from A Low Quiet Sea. I have another copy of um, Little Fires Everywhere. I liked it and I didn't love it. Armada, I actively didn't like it. And I like, like Ready Player One. I would totally reread Ready Player One. This is a, one of those particular problems in life where it turns out I think I bought the second book in a series, ugh, but I really wanna read this series. I think I'll keep it. Ooh, controversy. I think I will definitely get rid of Daisy Jones because it's been a year since the hype. I still haven't read it. I bought the audiobook or I loaned it for like, my library has the audiobook and I know I would listen to the audiobook if I ever did read this book. So I, ooh. 
<laughs> There's this kind of... I've realized that there was a bit of a genre here. I think I can move you back down. Historical fiction-y, like not fully historical fiction, but sort of historical fiction. Um, things like, well, some of them are fully, but like the miniaturist, the starless sea, Circe, Elijah's mermaid. They're, they're, it's just not a genre that I'm intrigued about right now. Then there's some that are like Eva Luna by Isabel Allende, which I want to read more by her, but that's not one that I'm like hyped on. Um, this one, The Hus Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Everyone I know loves this book and I just don't really care to read it. This one hurts because it was like more of a recent purchase. <laughs> I mean, it really shows how much influence other book things like YouTube videos and Instagram, like how much sway it has over me. And, and I think all of us, like, it's like, ah, they convince me to buy books that, and sometimes that's great because I read things that I wouldn't have read normally, but sometimes I like buy a book because everyone's so excited about it that I get, I get confused. Like I'm excited about it. This shelf here is all my nonfiction. This could be interesting. <laughs> Should I turn on my twinkle lights? Cute. Okay. Ooh, okay, this one is one that I've been so excited about for so long. Partly because so many of my friends loved it, partly because I just am obsessed with the cover. I listened to the first like two and a half hours of the audiobook and I was just not connecting with it. So this, this boy's gonna go. Is this controversial? Getting rid of bad feminist? I just... I've owned it for so long and I've read lots of her articles online so I don't feel this like burning urge to to read it and I also think I definitely would prefer the audiobook. Ever since I like started getting audiobooks from services like Libro FM, I will by the way link my affiliate down below. It doesn't cost you extra. I actually think you get something for free like a free audiobook or something but it's just such a great service because it supports indie booksellers. Um, so like using services like that and using my library for audiobooks, it's really changed the nonfiction game for me. My memory card's gonna run out. <laughs> okay, I very much don't expect to get rid of uh, anything really on this shelf. These books are all my Orwell books. I'm not gonna get rid of any of my Orwell books. He's my favorite author, and it's kind of like a just a collection that I've been building, so that's all gonna stay. Then it's my favorite books of all time. Clearly, I'm gonna keep my favorite books of all time. <laughs> uh, this can go in here. And then it's my Asian literature section. Mainly Asian translated literature, but there's a few uh, American Asian authors in here or Canadian Asian and I Don't think I'll get rid of any of these Well, oh, okay <laughs> Nobody's allowed to get mad at me about this. I'm gonna get rid of my manga. I have the first two volumes of Sailor Moon I love Sailor Moon. I consider Sailor Moon to be like the first fandom I was ever in. Um, I would watch Sailor Moon with my mom when I was like back in the 90s. <laughs> and this, um, I, I tried reading it, but I just never enjoyed it enough to keep going with the series. And then I was like, well, I definitely want to try manga because I love graphic novels. And so I bought the first two volumes of Bakuman. I read them and I liked them. I definitely, and I liked these too, but I just didn't fall in love with them. I'm not saying I'll never read manga. Um, I'm actually currently reading, where is that book? I'm currently in the middle of Band Book Club by um, Kim Hyun Suk, Ko Hyun Ju, and Ryan Estrada. And it is phenomenal. And it is like a standalone manga and I'm loving it. So, you know, I, I can love manga, but just, I don't wanna, I don't need those, but I will keep this one because it's like an original manga and my dad got it for me like decades ago, so that's fun. Okay, and then over on this wall, we have my vanity. <laughs> but we also have 
my big books, which I definitely want to keep, my witch books, and then my short story collection. So, hmm. I'm really interested in witches. I really enjoy witches. I think it's such a fun genre, but I don't want to just keep them because they're witch books, you know? So these two, I haven't heard that much about. I'm not that into. I think I will let them go. Short stories wise, oh look, I've got two, and this was my controversy. I have two collections of my lovely friend, Jen Campbell. I'll link her channel down below. She's a wonderful booktuber. Um, this was her collection of short stories that came out a few years ago and I didn't, I couldn't decide which cover I liked most. Did she sign one of them? I will just keep the one she signed. She signed that one, but this one's not signed. Oh my God, it is signed. Oh no. <laughs> this one's floppier. Look at that. This one's a lot floppier. Oh, that's tough. That's a tough call. Okay, I'm gonna keep this one. Oh. I'm gonna get rid of these two. Um, I like Tom Hanks as an actor, but <laughs> I mean, I don't need his collection. And A Bird in the House. The only reason I kept this book for so long was because I did a massive essay about it in my master's program. And it was like, we gone through so much together that I felt it was necessary that I, I hold on to him. But I hate this stupid book, so <laughs> I'm getting rid of it. Okay, so we didn't get rid of much on that shelf. I'll admit to that. But, oh God, we're moving into young adult. Oh God, oh God, oh God, okay. Whew. Let's, let's, let's zoom in here on the YA situation. Oh God, I'm scared. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's talk through this for a hot little second here. This is hard for me for a couple of reasons. Number one, I have had multiple experiences in wanting to reread one of my old favorite YA books and I just end up not really liking it. Now that doesn't happen all of the time. There are some YA books that hold up so well for me, but so many of these books, like probably the majority of, I've read and I'm now kind of scared to reread. And so I don't want to keep them to never reread them. So I'm keeping that in the back of my head, but I'm also trying to be cognizant of, I have not been getting much YA lately. And when I do get it, I don't tend to keep it. So, or like read it, I mean. So I, I've i got to be cold and aloof. aloof. Um, okay, this is just an eyeshadow palette that I convinced myself I needed and I have barely ever used. <laughs> this is a nightmare already. Okay, these two books are books that I'm sure you haven't ever heard of. Um, they are books that I found before I knew what YA was, before I knew what like making videos on YouTube like about books was. And so I, they have this like special place in my heart because they're some of the first books I ever did book reviews on. So I keep them for emotional reasons. They feel like my friends. Oh, like, do I keep my copy of The Maze Runner, a book I didn't like very much and will never read the sequels of and... No, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't keep that. <laughs> but I will keep Delirium, a book I really did like, even though I never read the sequels and probably never will. Let It Snow, John Green, one of my favorite authors. I love John Green. I think he's an incredible author and human, but I didn't love Let It Snow, so I'm not gonna keep it. <laughs> I just found one of my all-time favorite bookmarks that I thought I had lost. I actually had a nightmare recently. Um, well, in my last move, I sold a bunch of books before moving and I thought I'd lost my favorite bookmark. I was 95% sure that one of my favorite bookmarks was in one of the books that I sold. And I was devastated, still devastated. And then literally two weeks ago I found it. And so I am going to, one of the things I'm gonna do for sure is I'm gonna go through every single one of these books that I'm going to be donating and making sure that there is no memorabilia, bookmarks, money, <laughs> anything in those pages because I am one of these people who like leave stuff in pages. I have fond memories of If I Stay, but I don't care about where she went. <laughs> so 
Similar, Will Grayson, Will Grayson. I did not like this book very much. I don't need to keep it. It doesn't make me less of a John Green fan to not keep the John Greens that I don't like. I felt a lot of pressure to get a bunch of Roll Dolls books and I have like three here that I'm getting rid of and I read some of them for a children's literature class that I did. Um, I read this one just because everyone's always talking about but about it and they're good. They're really good. I think that they're fa like phenomenal modern fairy tales. Like they're they're so good. But I didn't read them as a child, so reading them now, I can like very much appreciate that they're good, but I don't feel any emotional attachment to them whatsoever, so I don't really want to keep them, and I like the idea of a kid getting to buy them for three dollars at my local bookshop instead. Okay, I think I'm gonna get rid of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I was so excited to read this book and I read like the first 50, 60 pages and I just didn't care. And then I didn't hear a single good review. Like I heard mildly good reviews, three star kind of reviews, but I didn't hear anyone. What is this little curl doing? I didn't hear anyone who was like, this is the greatest book of all time. Oh my gosh. You know what? I think I'm gonna get rid of this. This is... Where's that from? Who's that from? <laughs> Anna and the French Kiss is one of my favorite YA books. It I haven't reread it in years, so I don't know if it holds up or whatever, but it meant a lot to me when I was a teenager. This book I did not enjoy, so it doesn't mean that I don't like Stephanie Perkins or Anna if I don't keep this. I think I gotta move the chair. Okay. What should we- Ah! <laughs> You'll notice that I have revealed that I was hiding Lego. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna show you the giant pile of things we're getting rid of when we're all done. Oh man. Okie dokie, what are we looking at here? Looking at a, a dust jacket. <laughs> So starting over here are graphic novels, mainly that I have not read. Oh, oh god. This one, um, I'm getting rid of because this is an advanced copy where the only the first few pages were in color and then the rest was in black and white. And I actually think I'm gonna really like this one, so I'm going to buy the full version. And a bunch of these other ones I liked, but I didn't love them, like these three. So like, um, Bloom, Dodo, Young Francis. I like them, but they're not like my favorites. I'm not gonna reread them. Then what do we have? Oh, okay, then we have my poetry. Most of which I know I want to keep, um, but we must do our due diligence and go through it. The last section on these bookshelves is my classics, or are my, no, the section is singular, um, but it's made up of my classics. And this is another section where I don't think we're going to lose very many because Hmm. It's kind of weird, but like, even though a lot of these, I don't plan on reading them particularly soon. I really enjoy having my classics. I like having them as reference. I like um, collecting editions that I like. So a lot of the books that I have, like for example, Treasure Island. I would like to read Treasure Island one day, but what I care more about is having an edition of Treasure Island that I really love. So I don't want to get rid of Treasure Island, even though I don't know when I'm going to read it. I love the editions of these books I have. This is Charlotte's Web, this edition of Lolita, etc. So, but I'll still go through it. I will get rid of Daniel Deronda. <laughs> One of my most hated master's texts. I don't like this edition of Metamorphosis, actually. I don't feel like it's doing anything important. I'd rather get rid of it and one day get a copy I like. Okay, we're not getting rid of many here, but I'm getting rid of these three. Uh, this, this final one was one that I just 
was given. I don't really care about it. All right, let's zoom out. Maybe it doesn't look like we've done much here, but we actually really have. When I show you what's on the ground here, it's a lot, but we have a couple other tasks to do first. For example, <laughs> this is my Frida Kahlo book collection that I have no interest in getting rid of at all. I'm going to keep it all. I love them all. It's beautiful. There's nothing to see here, ladies and gentlemen. But if we don't look at that. <laughs> Like I said, I'm in the middle of a move and things get worse before they get better. Um, uh. Problem is that there's literally books everywhere. Um, oh, look at that stack. Wow, okay. No one else is gonna do it. A lot of the books in this little stack are books that I was taking photos of for my podcast's Instagram. My books often, like, I'll yank them down to record the podcast episode and then I take them over here to take photos of them and then I don't put them back on the shelf. So, plug for my, my uh, podcast. Help me make this pile worth it. <laughs> Actually, we've got a good chunk here. A lot of books that were recently sent to me by publishers that didn't ask to send me them. <laughs> you know, a very long time ago, I collected these editions of the Knife of Never Letting Go series. They are beautiful. Um, they're absolutely gorgeous. And as you can tell, I got that far into the first book and I just wasn't that into it. I. I liked part of it, like I, I, and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And so I never got rid of them because I was like, maybe I will finish it one day, but also because I just love these editions. These are such beautiful books, but I'm never gonna read them. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is the pile of books. This is a lot, actually. I am really proud of myself for <sighs> you know what moving is very emotional i have moved too many times to tell you about i don't i genuinely don't remember how many times i've moved growing up and in the last few years and it's emotional every single time and books are emotional to me so getting rid of books is hard and it's emotional but i think it's for the best i love the idea that somewhere some person is going to pick up one of these books and it could be their favorite book instead of it just sitting on my shelf. Hello everyone, it's Ariel in editing here and I wanted to let you know that the following day I went through my bookshelves again and I got rid of like a hundred more books. What you just watched was the first pass and I think a lot of the time it takes multiple passes to go through and really cull because then I went through when I was actually packing the books and I was physically putting them in a box to ship and I was like, you know what? I don't need to ship this. So it took about three goes actually to get rid of the full amount that I am about to tell you. I'll tell you the number. I should count how many books I have here. I'll count it later. I'll insert the number right here. <laughs> um, this is a lot and they're not, it's not even, if you see a book here and you're thinking she'd hated that book. No, I didn't. A lot of these I genuinely liked, but I didn't love them enough to hold on to them forever or I haven't read it yet. And the truth is I probably won't anytime soon. So it doesn't make sense to haul it across the country with me. <sighs> I'm going to put these in a box to take to my local bookstore. And um, I am going to start packing up the books that are left. And I might find that I find a few more that I end up getting rid of but it's a process and we've done the majority of it here today. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this. Please don't yell at me. <laughs> Please don't tell me that I've wasted my money because every single one of these books supported an author. I love the industry and I wanna help it out. So 
it's fine. Make sure that you're following my Instagram if you want updates on my move because it's going to be a lot more day-to-day -day moving stuff on my Instagram than it is on YouTube. And um, if you would like to support this channel, I would very much appreciate you checking out my Patreon where I do a lot of fun things like weekly voicemail messages for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!